Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story, employee stole, and I recorded him on camera. He was fired. The second story, I took the money and never returned to work. And the first story is, I recorded a coworker loving himself at work for eating my chocolate. Before you get to that part, I need to clarify that yes, I have a video, but I would never post it or anything. Let's name everyone involved in this. John, my boyfriend, the designer. Jenny, me, I did mostly video. Sarah, another coworker, she was the best photographer there. Mario, to say that he was useless is an understatement, the reason why I'm writing this. Donna, the director's assistant. Amy, the accountant. Years ago, I worked in a government institution where I live. It wasn't a good job. It was basically volunteered paid work that was an excuse to not give employees any security a real job would offer, but I accepted because I needed the money, and I had just finished college. I used to work in the communication department with other four co-workers. One of them was my boyfriend, still together to this day, and the youngest one, Mario, was a guy who was still in high school and got his girlfriend pregnant. His mom worked another government institution, and she got him that job. That's one of the reasons the boss couldn't fire him. We had to make designs, take pictures, do video, post on social media, check on the press when they wanted an interview with one of our bosses, and many, many other things. Mario was supposed to know about some photography and design, because he told us that's what he was studying at school, but we knew later that he didn't attend school often, so he was very, very bad at almost everything, and we tried to show him how to do his work, but he was really stubborn and lazy. He never learned completely how to do the basic work. He always had problems with many people, not with us at the beginning because he acted polite. That changed later. He was disrespectful when taking pictures. He was late almost every day, and he used to post in social media about government and fight to other people who didn't agree with him. Sarah and John would talk to him about how working in a government institution you couldn't do that. It's simply not okay. However, he never changed and told his mom we were against him. Mario went to work around two to four hours a day. Usually John and Sarah would be the only ones to see him because they worked more hours than the rest of us, but he would stay in the office around one or two hours alone, or they would send him to take pictures for the same time. One day he had to take pictures of some event practice. Everyone else was off the clock, it wasn't a big event, and he had been working there around a year by that time, so we thought that he could go by himself. The accountant had to go there and decided to take him with her, and one coworker of hers in her car. He was late again, and that's why he couldn't go in one of the work cars. The accountant left her purse open in that space that's in the middle of the driver and the co-driver's seats. When they went back to the office, she noticed her wallet disappeared. She instantly knew that had to be Mario that was the one who took it. They began to search him and our office and found nothing. Somebody found the wallet under the vending machine. At first, we took his side because they admitted that they never found anything and because it wasn't right to search in our office without anybody else there, mostly because we had photography equipment that wasn't exactly cheap. However, when we knew the wallet was found and when we talked to him, we knew it was him. More money and stuff disappeared when he was there, but nobody could prove he took them. The bosses didn't want to create a scandal, so they let it happen. Our office used to be the conference room, so it was attached to the kitchen, and the director had beverages there for visits. We could use the kitchen but not touch those beverages, but Mario couldn't even get in there. Anyway, the sodas began to disappear, and the director's assistant complained to us. We said we didn't take them and she wouldn't believe us. One day, John noticed that our door to the kitchen was broken and that you could take the lock easily. With a pencil, we used to find pencils without tips. He took it inside the mechanism and then the door opened. It took its time, but he proved that Mario was getting in the kitchen when nobody else was there. However, that didn't make a difference and nothing was done, not even talking to him. One day, John and me were on our way to work, but I didn't have breakfast, so we stopped at a store. I bought something to eat and a chocolate. I put it inside the fridge and forgot about it. The next day I remembered about it and went to check. It wasn't there and I got mad. John and I checked the trash can. It was clean and empty and we just watched, and we found just little pieces of that chocolate. So we asked for a video camera that someone offered us before. It could record for long hours. I want to clarify at this point that we didn't take the decision of everything you're about to read just because of a chocolate. The chocolate was the last straw. For like a year we had put up with our bosses scolding us because of him. He never wanted to learn how to do his job, and things were always disappearing, including personal things. The first day, Donna left money in one of her drawers and left it slightly open so he could see the money. We put the camera in another building that was in front of ours. 
We had big windows, floor to ceiling, and you could watch Donna's desk in the hallway. Some lady's office, our door and the director's office. The other building just had empty offices then but had big curtains. That's why Mario couldn't see the camera. We went home that day and left the camera recording. The next day there was the money, maybe because we left one billet equivalent to $5 and he knew we would know he took it. I checked the camera and watched him getting in the lady's office. I don't know what she did there and he took some cookies from her office but he looked suspicious. Again with this we couldn't do much, so that night John found an old cell phone that could record for two hours. The next day Donna left $5 again, but now she left $1 bills in the same drawer slightly open. We placed the camera in the other building and John disguised his old cell phone with a binder and some sticky tape. That day he got a loan for a two a little less than two hours and left. John and me had a car, so we were in a mall close to there, just killing time, and then we went back for the cell phone. OMG, John watched a little bit of the video before the battery died. He said that he saw something weird, but wasn't sure because the screen was very damaged and we were in the car. I was driving. When we got in John's house, we could watch everything he had done inside our office. Not the other camera because the building was closed, and we didn't have access to it until the next day. First, we saw him getting in the office watching some YouTube, everything normal. Then he went out and when he came back we saw him putting something in his pocket, but it wasn't clear what. Then we saw how easily he took a pencil, opened the kitchen's door and took something like a yogurt. Then he closed the door. Then we could hear that he was watching something like a channel that's very famous in our country. But then, we heard noises. Yeah, that kind of noises. We were supposed to have blocked that kind of videos and websites. I mean those were government offices, and the IT team had checked everything recently. But some way he was watching XXX video on the computer I used to work. And if you're thinking if he did what you're thinking, the answer is yes. Thank God the cell phone didn't record his hands. I know, very disgusting. I was so shocked and disgusted when I saw that that I wanted to cry. The next day the first thing I did was to call the IT department to clean the computer. We didn't say why because of obvious reasons. John took the camera and we could watch him when he went out of the office and check carefully if somebody was around. Then he went to Donna's desk and took one dollar. He went inside the woman's office and took something but we couldn't see what. Then he went into our office. We called Donna to our office and she was shocked. Then Sarah watched the video as soon as she got there. Then the director arrived and we asked him and Amy to go to our office. We showed them the video. The director was very young and trusted us a lot, so he didn't hold his laughter when the self-love part began. Amy was a young and delicate woman, so she just turned around and covered her eyes while letting a small scream out. We finally got the proof needed to fire him. When he got to work they didn't let him in. I don't know how the conversation went, but I know some of the words exchanged. Amy, you stole again, and we told you, and last time we told you it was your last chance. Mario raising his voice. I didn't do anything. You're always blaming me. Amy, we have proof. Mario, you don't have anything. All of you hate me. Amy, don't make me show you. Mario, well, show me. Amy called our office. John, could you bring the videos? John, the first one, the video camera one, or the second, the cell phone one. Amy, the second one. When he heard that, he was defeated and very nervous. John took his time downloading the video into his computer because it was in mine and went to the office Amy was talking to Mario. John told me he was about to show him the video and then he asked Mario, John, Mario, do you really want to watch this video? Mario, he couldn't even watch John in the eyes. No, I don't want. Amy, play at least the first video for him. John, I don't have that one. Let me go for it. I admit that I just wanted to see Mario's face, so I went to that office to give them a USB, but he didn't really watch me. Amy to John and me. Okay, thank you, that's gonna be all. And we left the office. We know she said something like, Amy, after playing the video. You always said it was us, and even told your mom that we wanted to get you in trouble all the time. You even told really bad things about this place. You're fired, and we don't ever want to hear about you complaining to anybody else in the Central, or we're gonna show these two videos to your mom. And he just left. Then we heard that he actually told lies to his mom like, Mario, they hated me and told lies to make them fire me. But no one ever told his mom. Not that I know. Well, this story made me realize that someone could be recording me anywhere I go. I mean, even I did it to someone. The second story is, How I Screwed My Lying Employer Back By Not Doing Anything Two years ago, I worked in southern China. I had my own little business after spending a year teaching English, and life was good. I eventually got an offer to teach business at a university. The offer was from a friend slash acquaintance, whom I knew from doing freelance IT at a local expat bar. I was always there helping the old business guys work their computers. Anyway, this guy R was an academic, and like most expats and academics, he was a drunk. 
No big deal, I was pretty used to the type. He offered me a job at the university he worked at BIT, Beijing Institute of Technology in Zhuhai. The pay seemed good, class hours are short, only about two to three classes per day, sometimes less, and it was in a great location. So knowing R as a person I liked and trusted more or less, I started there. Flash forward two months. My boss there, Jeff, is a piece of SH. He hasn't even told me an honest word since I got there. They loaded me with 24 classes per week after my first two weeks, and they never fixed anything that was broken. We didn't have working internet. At the Beijing Institute of Technology, we didn't have working internet. Jeff, my SH head boss, was told that I was good with computers, so he constantly asked me why I haven't made the internet faster yet. I told him that he needs to buy faster internet. I can't just snap my fingers and turn the cord into fiber optics. I sent him emails about the usual stuff. Students cheating, no internet, the books being illegally printed from UK curriculum, and thus being about UK business law, and not Chinese or even international business law. He ignored it all. Eventually I got in trouble for letting my students out after a final. Yes, my students were supposed to stay in class for another two hours after a final. Evidently it wasn't a legit school, and the students' parents could possibly complain to the authorities if they found out their kids weren't in the classes that they paid for. The authorities would then come to BIT and shut everything down because of missing business or education licenses. I had asked Jeff what to do after finals, or if I could let the students out, but like always he ignored my emails. Jeff brought me into his office and showed me other emails from another teacher, talking about how professional that teacher was for emailing him everything, all in a condescending tone, because of course. I made up my mind then and there to get the heck out. Anyway, I've been there two months. My suggestion ideas have all been ignored. I've been lied to about how many classes I would have to teach, and my boss is an a-hole. It's also time for me to get a new China visa. Well, the admin there tells me to just go to Hong Kong and get a business visa. Teaching under a business visa is illegal. They won't pay for it. I can't do that because my passport has six months of validity left, and you can't get new visas when there's just six months left. BIT should have known that, because they had scans of my passport for the last two months. But the lazy morons never bothered to check. Now I knew number three was going to happen. I couldn't trust Jeff or BIT, but I could trust them to be incompetent morons who wouldn't actually handle something I reminded them about multiple times. So I tell them at BIT, thanks for paying me in advance. In cash. Shady, right? But I legally have to leave the country now. Bye. Never went back, never saw them again. To this day I look back with glee about how I walked out that day with one month of extra pay because I legally could not be in China anymore, and those idiots had nobody to blame but themselves. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.